Poštovani gledalci, dobrodošli u granice Istoka. Ja sam Harun Karčić. U ovom izdanju emisije analiziramo posljedice Balfurove deklaracije na Bliskom istoku. Ovog mjeseca palestinci širom svijeta obježavaju stotu u godišnjicu Balfurove deklaracije, koja je donesena 2. novembra 1917. godine. Deklaracijom, čiji je potpisnik tadašnji britanski ministar vanjskih poslova Arthur James Balfour, pokrenuto je cijepanje palestinske zemlje s ciljem osnivanja nacionalne države za jevrijski narod. Balfurova deklaracija smatra se jednim od okidača Nakbe, odnosno masovnog protjerivanja palestinaca iz njihove domovine 1948. godine i glavnim uzrokom tekućeg palestinsko-izraelskog sukoba. Ko je zapravo Arthur James Balfour i kako je njegova deklaracija mogla imati tako daleko sežne posljedice? Arthur Balfour, čovjek iz britanskog establishmenta koji je 1917. obnašao funkciju sekretara za vanjsku politiku. Njegova zemlja je tada učestovala u Prvom svjetskom ratu i borila se na mnogim frontovima, uključujući borbu protiv Osmanskog carstva na teritoriji koju su zvali Sveta zemlja. Tada Balfour obznanjuje svoju poznatu deklaraciju. Vlada njegovog veličanstva sa blagonaklonošću gleda na stvaranje nacionalnog ognjišta za jevrijski narod u Palestini i uložit će najveće napore kako bi olakšala postizanje tog cilja, pri čemu treba jasno razumjeti da neće biti učinjeno ništa što bi moglo kršiti građanska i vjerska prava postojećih nejevrejskih zajednica u Palestini ili prava i politički položaj koji jevreji uživaju u makojoj drugoj zemlji. Britanska vlada nije razmišljala o tome što će ta deklaracija učiniti Arapima. To je jednostavno istina. Razmišljali su kako će postići ciljeve u ratu i odmah nakon njega. Razmišljali su o propagandi i kako da zaštite svoje interese. Lojalno stanovništvo u Palestini, Suezki kanal, putevi za Indiju i cijeli imperijalni kontekst je veoma važan za razumijevanje što se je događalo 1917. godine. Ali za arapsku većinu Balfurovo obećanje je iznevjereno. 20. i 30. godina prošlog vijeka Palestinom je upravljala Velika Britanija na osnovu mandata Lige naroda. Britanci su već tada shvatili da deklaracija nije izbalansirala nacionalne zahtjeve jevreja i Arapa, već je dodatno pogoršala situaciju. Od trenutka odlaska Britanaca i uspostavljanja Izraela 1948. mnogi i jevreji i Arapi su prezirali Britaniju. Priranje Izraelske države imalo je palestinsku nagbu za direktnu posljedicu. Posljedice toga su i danas vidljive. Palestinci kažu da je današnja izraelska okupacija direktna posljedica onoga što se dogodilo prije 50 godina, a i onoga što se dogodilo 1917. Okupljanje u Londonu povodom obilježavanja stogodišnjice deklaracije. Mnogi izraelci će proslaviti ovu stogodišnjicu, dok će palestinci žaliti zbog nje, a za Britaniju je ovo neprijatan datum. Pogledajmo i glavne aktere u izredi Balfourove deklaracije. Arthur Balfour bio je britanski premijer, a kasnije u vrijeme premijera Davida Lloyda Georgea, ministar vanjskih poslova. Autor je deklaracije koji je uvjerio engleski ratni kabinet da izda taj dokument. Lionel Walter Rothschild bio je nasljednik moćne bankarske jevrijske porodice, cionist i blizak prijatelj Haima Weizmana, te predsjednik Engleske cionističke federacije. Na njega je adresirana Balfourova deklaracija. Haim Weizman, koji je kasnije postao prvi predsjednik Izraela, bio je ruski cionist i hemičar, za koga se smatralo da je najuticajnija ličnost odgovorna za Balfourovu deklaraciju. David Lloyd George bio je premijer u koalicijskoj vladi u periodu 1916-1922, koja je donijela Balfourovu deklaraciju. Herbert Samuel, vatrni cionist njimačkog porijekla, sugerisao je britanskoj vladi uspostavljanje jevrijske države. I Mark Sykes, kao službenik ratnog kabineta britanske vlade, bio je ključna veza Weizmana i njegovih cionističkih aktivista i političara. Sykes je bio bitan faktor u pregovorima koji su doveli do donošenja deklaracije. Idemo sada do Amana gdje se nalazi historičarka Rowan Damen. Rowan, hello and welcome to our show. Now, um, was the Balfour Declaration the first such document that promised European Jews uh, a homeland in Palestine or were there such similar documents before? Yeah, many people, Harun, think that the Balfour uh, Declaration in 1917 was the sole document and this is not true. 
200 years ago and 100 years before the Balfour Declaration, semi declarations came out. And the late Egyptian scholar, Dr. Abdul Wahab al Masiri, who spent 25 years working on his encyclopedia on the subject, called those documents Balfour like declarations. And this is why I used the same text in my writings and even a short animation that I did recently. And the idea is that Napoleon Bonaparte in 1799 called the Jews around the world during his invasion of the Levant to come and settle in Palestine. His campaign failed and, and ultimately the first French Balfour-like declaration failed. But later, in 1841, the first British initiative after Muhammad Ali united the area in the Middle East nowadays, Egypt and Syria, the British, there was a very clear initiative by the British Council in Damascus, Charles Henry Churchill, he wrote to Moses Hayim, who was a leader in the Jewish community in England, and there was a comprehensive plan of settling the Jews in Palestine. Later on, the British Foreign Ministry discovered that the time was not ripe yet to do this. There was even an attempt in America in 1890-91 to issue an American Balfour-like declaration. There was a big conference in Chicago in 1890 with the title, The Past, Present and Future of Israel. Israel was not there at all. That was five years before Theodor Herzl even published his book, The State of the Jews, Theodor Herzl in 1896. And even after Theodor Herzl came to the picture, there was a Balfour-like declaration, a, a, a German Balfour-like declaration, when the emperor of Germany, Wilhelm II, uh, spoke with Sultan Abdul Hamid II, the Ottoman Sultan, about getting rid of the Jews in Germany. This was the aim mm -hmm. of the emperor at that time. But Istanbul rejected the idea and the project failed. Even there was a Russian Balfour-like declaration in 1903. So many French, British, German, Russian and American declaration prior preceded the Balfour-like declaration. Now, the British Empire seriously considered allocating Uganda uh, as a national home for European Jews. Uh, why did that plan fail, even though we know that uh, Theodor Herzl initially supported it? Yeah, Arthur Balfour himself, who was the prime minister at that time in 1903, he was the foreign minister in 1917, but in 1903 he was the prime minister, and he himself started what's called the Oganda scheme. This scheme lasted for 10 years of discussion. The idea was to settle the Jews in Kenya of nowadays. It was called the Uganda scheme, but they meant the Kenya in the map of today. And Theodor Herzl himself, as you said, approved it. Even the Zionist Sixth Conference, majority of the conference approved the idea. They discussed it so long, but then both the Zionists and the British decided to play on the religious card of the connection between the Jews and Palestine, and they preferred the geopolitics of Palestine for establishing a national home for Zionist Jews. And so the idea became more clear and ripe towards the end of World War I. What is the relationship between Christian Protestant religious belief and their stringent support for the Zionist cause, which is very evident in today's America? Yeah, Zionism was born in the Christian Protestant religious beliefs. So Zionism was born there because those beliefs believed that Christ would return and we will have all of us happy life if the Jews resettle in Palestine. This is still to today. Even Zionists had a big celebration with the Christian Zionist celebration in Albert Hall in London on November 7th. The 4,000 people attended this celebration of the 100 years on the Balfour Declaration. So this is still very active in Europe and in America. But Zionism with time, it transferred into a political doctrine where it's a settler military colonization. So the religious beliefs are now igniting as they did 100 years ago, but now it's a political scheme. It's a political military colonization. Many Zionists around the world, they support Zionism, 
but they don't want to immigrate to Palestine. So they support the idea without being able or willing to go into living in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Now, the British government refuses to apologize for the Balfour Declaration. Has anything, in your view, changed in the relationship between the British government and the Zionist movement? Yeah, we, I was part of launching a campaign that is called Balfour, a colonial project campaign that we asked vividly the British government to apologize via different means. And what I believe is that the, the British government, when it issued the Balfour Declaration, which is only 67 words 100 years ago, the text was handed with a lot of care by the British politicians. And later in the British Mandate of Palestine that lasted 30 years to apply the Balfour Declaration and to transfer Palestine into a Zionist state. So Zionism became 100 years ago an official objective of the British foreign policy. And this did not change at all. Even when Zionism moved into America in the 40s more than Britain. But Britain kept Zionism as an official objective of its uh, foreign policy. The breakthrough that uh, was done in the last 20 years uh, and even in the last 15 years more, that the British uh, nation, the people themselves, and with them, many intellectuals, many NGOs, many politicians, but not in the government itself, are pro-Palestine. They know what happened. They more and more are aware of the British role of transferring Palestine into a Zionist and the injustice that was done to Palestine. And this is why on November 4th, there was a big demonstration in London, 15,000 people, most of them British, not Palestinians, not Arabs, British people who participated. And the slogan was the hashtag make it right for Palestine. And they used the hashtag Balfour 100, which we are using for our campaign for the last two months. So there is change, but not on the highest elite uh, in Britain. Rowan, uh, it was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harun. Poštovani gledalci, bila to Ravan Damen, historičarka iz Amana. Tačno 30 godina kasnije, 29. novembra 1947. godine, nakon masovnog useljavanja evropskih jevreja na područje Palestine, Ujedinjeni narodi su donijeli rezoluciju o podijeli Palestine na jevrijski i palestinski dio. Time je otvoren put za formiranje države Izrael naredne 1948. godine. A šta se desilo sa palestincima, muslimanima i kršćanima koji su stoljećima živjeli u Palestini, saznajte u video priči koja slijedi. Idemo sada do New Yorka gdje se nalazi rabin David Feldman iz ultra-ortodoksne organizacije Neture Karta. Rabbi Feldman, hello and welcome to our show. Now, a hundred years has passed since the Balfour Declaration. Would you say that this declaration has done great injustice to the people of Palestine? 
Uh, well, certainly, after all these years, um, even though we'll, we might say that Lord Balfour had a good intention to help people after so many years of suffering and exile, uh, and it happens to be that in the Balfour Declaration, Lord Balfour did make very clear that this plan of making a Jewish homeland should not affect at, uh, indigenous people of the land, the non-Jewish residents of the Holy Land. And unfortunately, after all these years, definitely we find that this terrible Nakba, this terrible catastrophe took place. And we are approaching now November 29th, which is the day when the United Nations uh, made this partition plan. And each and every year we participate in the United Nations while they are commemorating and uh, expressing solidarity with the Palestinian people for everything that has uh, happened to them. In other words, the world recognizes that this is a true cat catastrophe. Now, uh, your organization is one that has recently held protests in New York City against the Balfour Declaration. Uh, why are religious Jews such as yourself against the state of Israel and the Zionist movement? Um, okay, uh, to make it very short, first of all, as we began, you know, all these crimes that took place uh, in Palestine, all what was done, and sadly, supposedly in the name of the Jewish people, all of this is total criminal. All of this is against humanity. It's against our people. It's against our religion. All of this is totally forbidden according to Judaism. Killing, stealing, oppressing, occupying another's land, and so on. Uh, all these actions that took place, sadly, is a total crime within Judaism. In addition to all of this, even if this would be in total peace, you know, even if we go back to the Balfour Declaration, even if Balfour's dream would be fulfilled, even if no prejudice against other people will take place, even if no uh, oppression against other people would happen, according to Judaism, all of this is forbidden. Basics of Judaism teaches that Jews are in exile by divine decree, and we are forbidden to create a state of our own. Because of all of this, what took place, in total contrast to Judaism, the Jewish leaders from the very beginning of Zionism, going back even way before 1948, we are dealing with the Balfour Declaration, which is 100 years, uh, all Jewish leaders opposed, well, almost all, all Jewish leaders, with an exception of very, very few, uh, opposed all what Israel uh, stood for, all what Israel was about uh, to do. And presently now, when we are standing in 2017, it's already for decades, where we find masses of Jewish people who are strongly adherent and followers of the Jewish religion, not only oppose all what Israel is doing, not only oppose the actual existence of the state of Israel, but they come out in public and denounce all what is taking place. Now, how has the Zionist movement managed to present the establishment of the State of Israel as a project support, supported by all Jews around the world? Oh, that, 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 that's a good question with a long answer. But we have to do this very short. No, take you your know, time. All, all this propaganda, this massive Zionist propaganda taking place already for, for so many, well, for decades, uh, propaganda in all in all its kinds, starting with total falsehood, uh, uh, well, claiming the very first uh, 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 um, uh, lie that they wanted to fool the world, that we are talking about uh, a land without a people for a people without a land. And this, this was a lie used for the world to, uh, by that against a support to the movement of Zionism. But so many lies they have used uh, for the Jewish communities, uh, presenting the Arab people as our enemies, this anti-Semitism accusation, which is very sad because we lived for so many decades in so many other Muslim countries and in Palestine, and we lived in peace. So much pressure, intimidation, is being put upon not only non-Jewish people in the world when they dare to speak up and they dare to condemn whatever the state of Israel is doing, so much pressure and intimidation is being put upon Jewish people whenever whoever chooses to stand up for righteousness, to stand up for what Judaism is, to protect humanity or preserve the Jewish religion. They would be intimidated to a terrible degree. And what, what is very important to mention is 
presently now and our days now, already going on now for maybe well several years, you might be aware that the state of Israel attempts to force all its residents, all Jews, to support the state of Israel and to actually physically serve in the Israeli army, the Israeli defense force, and carry to carry out all these atrocities and all these violations against Judaism, what they uh, uh, decide to do. Now, this is a, 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 a great struggle taking place now. But what they are trying to do is by force, to force all Jews to, uh, to, to follow them. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not only force. They try to do this by bribery, by money, by they, they offer support to our anti-religious communities. And understandably, uh, most of us will refuse that. Some Jewish people who are still strong with Judaism, uh, for one reason or another, they might take some support from the Israeli government. Well, we, do, we disagree. But this is unfortunately many, many ways how they uh, try to infuse their philosophy, their propaganda, their movement into religious Jewish people. Yes. To a certain extent, they were successful uh, throughout these decades. But if you if you really uh, follow the news, and you know Al Jazeera is one of those beautiful examples helping these these facts on the ground to be transmitted to the world, we can find masses of Jewish people worldwide. I'm in New York, uh, in in Jerusalem, in England, and so many other parts of the world. We still have masses of Jewish people. Mm -hmm. who totally disagree to everything Israel stands for. Now, Rabbi, uh, your organization, Netere Karta, has earlier called for the peaceful dismantlement of the State of Israel. Uh, why do you think the State of Israel should be dismantled? Oh, why? Because the State of Israel is so wrong, so dangerous, so catastrophic, so much death and destruction has it caused to everyone involved. So much catastrophe in Nakba to the Palestinian people, so much danger to the Jewish people, so much blood from all sides were spilled, so much violation against Judaism, against the religion that we give our lives for, so much destruction, so much disaster. This obstacle to peace has to stop. It really needs to stop for the favor of us all, for all humanity, for the favor, for the sake of God, for the sake of God's religion. But that said, we pray and we hope that this should stop peaceful, this should end as other uh, regimes, other obstacles to peace stopped in the past. We had the Soviet Union that was so, uh, 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 people were so afraid of, and it stopped in peace. Apartheid mm -hmm. South Africa stopped in, in, in relatively peace. I visited South Africa, I visited so much, uh, so many people that suffered under the apartheid. And still in all, these people uh, were willing to stop this uh, peaceful as long as this, uh, uh, this oppression stops. And I have to add, I visited, I met personally so many Palestinian people, government, government leaders, religious leaders, and laymen, so many people. And we always find that beautiful tolerance and that nice ability, and which gives us very strong hope that we can overcome this conflict, we can overcome this pain, we can overcome this hatred, and we can once again appreciate and, and witness that beautiful peace that did exist in Palestine and so many other Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. This future is not so far away, but we have to agree that this occupation has to stop. All right. Rabbi David Feldman, thank you so much for speaking to us. It was a pleasure having you on Al Jazeera. Thank you. You're welcome. glad out see to Rabbi David Feldman is New Yorka. Po svemu sudeći, britanska vlada nije sklona revidiranju svog kolonijalnog ponašanja u Palestini koje je dovelo do uspostavljanja države Izrael na palestinskoj teritoriji i devastacije koja je zadesila palestinski narod. Kao direktan rezultat Balfourove deklaracije, palestinci su prograni sa većine svog zemljišta dok je njihovo društveno tkivo razoreno. 
Nedavne izjeve britanske premijerke Tereze May, u kojima se hvalila deklaracijom i učešćem Velike Britanije u stvaranju Izraela, dokaz su nepromjenjene politike te države prema cionističkom pokretu. Bilo je to sve u ovom izdanju Granica Istoka. Cijelu emisiju možete gledati na našem web portalu balkans.aljazira.net. Hvala na pažnji.